Hey there, how are you doing? It is Monday and we have another amazing topic to help you prepare for NCLEX if this is your first time. Hi, my name is Regina Callion, MSN RN, and I am the leader of the Remar Nurses. Today I'm going to be talking about gastro um, esophageal reflux disorder or disease, GERD. And this is something that is in your quick facts for NCLEX. However, before I get into that, I have some housekeeping things that I want to go over as this is Monday, the first day of this new week. What a blessing it is to have this new day that you've never seen before. This is a gift. Okay, so housekeeping tips for this week is we have class today at noon. We will not be having Winning Wednesday this week. Uh, we typically have Winning Wednesday at 9 p.m. However, because I'll be traveling, I'm doing Winning Wednesday on Tuesday. I'm doing Winning Wednesday tomorrow night, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. So tell your friends we're going to do class Wednesday, uh, Tuesday at 9. Huntington's disease is going to be the topic. Also, as you are uh, preparing for your NCLEX date, some of you are testing really soon. I really want you to position your test date, understanding that this is the one thing in nursing that you actually do have control over. In nursing school, you didn't have much control over you know, when you would get tested and the subjects and things like that. But in CLEX, you really do. You, you are not surprised by the date of your NCLEX. You actually choose when you're taking the exam. So I want you to position yourself as the person in control when it comes to NCLEX. Because again, nobody is going to do this for you. Nobody's going to do the work that needs to be done for you. Okay. Nobody is going to make sure that you have the nursing career of your dreams. And I don't want you to think that there is any shortcuts to this process. You have to do the work. Okay. You have to do the work. And so every time that you make a daily sacrifice, every time that you show up for class or you get into V2, you watch a video, you take an exam, then that is going to lead to you being in a better position when it's time for test date, when it's time for test date. So shout out to everybody here. Class is in session. We're going to be talking about GERD today. Remember, winning Wednesday is tomorrow night. So it's Tuesday, Tuesday at 9 p.m. All right, so let's get into this topic here. You made it to the live class. GERD is the topic. It's glad to see you. It's glad to see you. So Esopho, gastroesophageal reflux disease. What is it? Oh, wait, before we go even into this, I don't even want to go into this. I We got to go for some basic anatomy because when we have an understanding of the issue, we do so much better in our critical thinking. So I'm going to do something I usually don't do. Now, y'all know that very, very often I don't have the opportunity to show my best talent, which is my art skills. Like, if I wasn't a nurse, I would definitely be like Bob Ross in this piece. And so what I'm about to do is I'm going to draw this issue, GERD, but I'm, I'm doing it. So this is my head. All right. And then so this is my esophagus. And then this is my stomach here. Bam. My goodness. OK. And so we know that the stomach here is comprised of. What's down in here? We got acid down in here. Let me draw me some eyes up top. Bam, bam. Bob Ross in this piece. Yes. All right. And this is when I do have my curls. Okay. Now, when we talk about GERD, when we talk about GERD, I probably need some arms and some legs here. And I'm wearing shoes today. Okay. So when we talk about GERD, this is the esophagus and this is the stomach here. When we think about GERD, what is the issue? Is the issue the esophagus or is the issue the stomach? Which one? Okay. What is the real problem with GERD? 
Because when the patient comes in, when the patient comes in, what they may tell you can be different from what's the actual problem. Haiti in the house, Georgia in the house. And so, oh my goodness. Got nurses from all over, all over <laughs> Nigeria. Amazing. All right. So I'm look, I'm glad I asked this question. See what a simple, see what a simple diagram can do. It can help us to make sure that we're all on one page. Cause I was just gonna start lecturing and I wouldn't have known that we have some confusion at this basic foundational point here. Okay, so the issue when we talk about GERD is esophagus or stomach, esophagus or stomach, it's the esophagus, okay? This is the problem with GERD. Now, this is interesting because when patients come in, they're going to be complaining of probably stomach problems. They're going to be complaining of issues with their stomach. So I feel sometimes that NCLEX questions will draw you to the stomach problems and then they won't actually allow you to develop that the problem is with the esophagus. So you have to know, all right? And so when we talk about in nursing GERD, we are mostly focusing on the symptoms and not the real reason for the problem. So the symptoms, what's the number one symptom when we talk about GERD? What are patients going to report that they have? Remember, you can't say complain of anymore because that's negative. That's like a negative connotation towards your patient. So when you're charting in nursing, we cannot write, we should not write patient complains of, okay? We should say patient reports. So exactly, good job. Patient is going to report this thing. Put my comment on the screen. There we go. Patient's going to report this, this heartburn, this heartburn. And they're going to say that they have heartburn this is in quick facts too. And the heartburn is painful. It is a painful process. Yes, they also will have some reflux, right? Some, so regurgitation. And that also can be painful. You guys, this is so, uh, this is so good. Oh my goodness. These comments are amazing. Some patients may vomit because what is happening with, when you have GERD, what's happening? It's this acid production is going up. So it's traveling up, it's traveling up into here, okay? All right, and the reason is, is because, thank you so much, is because this lower esophageal sphincter, they call it LES, right? LES, it's not actually closing. It's not like a, a true valve like it's supposed to be. So the pressure here is not, is not containing all of the acid down. Patient, our patient's gonna have this heartburn. Our patient's gonna have heartburn. Now, other things that might, other things that you might see on next gen NCLEX, particularly, is not the main symptoms of heartburn, but something else that happens, and that is your patients, their voice may change, right? Why would a patient with GERD, why might their voice change? Anybody, just tell me. <laughs> so, right? So, because we're talking about, remember, a part of next-gen NCLEX is that you have to be able to know differential diagnosis, all right? And so that means your patient may come in and they may have a symptom and it could be like three different things. And you have to determine what is the true, true, true. Oh, what is the true reason? Very good, very good. So what happens is this, what happens is this, the acid is going and it is affecting the, the voice box, right? It's, it's, it's affecting the pharynx, the larynx, all of that thing. So your patient, their voice might actually be changing because of irritation. Very good. Very good. Okay. So what else did I want to say about this? Oh, so let me ask you this. We talked about the problem being 
the esophagus, esophag esophagus, right? Now, what is more important for the patient in digestion? Is it going to be the lower esophageal sphincter or is it going to be the stomach? Which one is going to be the most important part of digestion? What do we say? Okay. It is definitely, good job, Samira. It's definitely going to be the stomach, the stomach. And so when we have GERD, we also can expect our patient's digestion to be affected, digestion to be decreased. The um, Because the patient is going to be, is not going to be able to digest food properly, especially if they have too much acid buildup because that is going to put them at risk for what? What, what little things are going to start to develop in the patient's stomach? What are we calling these things? They're going to be even more painful. That's why a patient can come in with abdominal pain and for next-gen NCLEX, you don't know if it's appendicitis, right? You don't know if it's diverticulitis. You don't know if it's GERD. Yes, good job. So the patient can do, begin to develop ulcers. And then with the ulcers, that decreases the surface area that the patient needs to actually digest their food. Oh, you guys are doing amazing today. You guys are doing amazing today. All right. Now I think we can I think we can go into the actual lesson now. That was fun. That was fun. Thank you for allowing me to get my Bob Ross on today. So when we talk about the GERD, when we talk about the GERD, we are having a backflow of the gastric and and or the duodenal contents. Yes, and we know that the stomach has acid in it and that acid if it is not controlled, if it gets um, you know, if it, if areas get exposed to it too much, it will start to have erosion or ulcers. Okay. And so the reason why is typically it's due to, we talk about GERD, it's due to an incompetent lower esophageal sphincter. All right. It can be pyloric stenosis or a motility disorder as well, but we're focusing on the GERD and the lower esophageal sphincter that is not closing all the way. And so the esophag esophagus can be damaged by acidic gastric secretions and exposure to digestive enzymes. And that is another reason why we said the voice box can change too, because the acidic gastric secretions, if they are going up the esophagus, they can damage the vocal cords. And so the etiology of it, why does this happen? There is no known cause, but those of those of you who have this condition, you may also have these other conditions at the same time, stomach abnormalities in general, pregnancy, I should say slash obesity, okay? A, a lot of women know when they become pregnant, one of the, you know, the first things that they will be experiencing perhaps in the second trimester will be heartburn. And they say, oh, if the if you have heartburn, then that means your baby has a lot of hair, right? That's like an old wives tale. But anyways, mm, pregnancy, obesity, stress, smoking can cause this and acid reflux of the food, the food that you're eating. Some food can definitely cause this. All right. Shout out to Light of the World with our first. This is the first one I've seen. Um, hi, Professor Regina. Thank you for the encouragement you give on this page. Your voice alone inspires me. I passed my NCLEX last week, Thursday. I am a fool. This is this is not a partial. <laughs> it's not a partial, but I'm a fool. Remar nurse. Congratulations. So proud of you. Thank you for coming back and uh, telling us that you got those big letters. Congratulations. We are celebrating you. Whew. All right. Now for the rest of us, back to the journey. Here's the grind for us. Okay. So there's no known etiology of it, but many, many different um, circumstances that surround it. So the clinical manifestations, complications, Apologize for the partial screen here. Belching, pyrosis, okay? Pyrosis, dyspepsia. 
I expect you to know all of these words, okay? Regurgitation, dysphagia, odinophagia, hypersalivation, esophagitis, bleeding, aspiration. Woo, look at those medical terms. This is definitely part, and, and this is why I tell you who are trying to prepare for NCLEX and you're in nursing school, it is very, very crucial that you at least start with your fundamentals where you will be exposed to the language of nursing because this is not only a, a medical exam. This is, check this out. This is a medical exam. This is an English competency exam. And this is a reading comprehension exam. And so that's why it's important for you to do content, practice questions, and then also, um, I think computer adaptive testing case studies are very important, okay? So you have to cover all of your basis, all of your basis here. Okay. And so the do's, the don'ts, and the symptoms here, very important for the do's, eat small portions of food, all right? When you have GERD, you do not need big meals. They make the situation worse. Eat two hours before bedtime. This is also important because of what your positioning is crucial to how a person with GERD experiences that regurgitation. Maintaining a healthy weight. And then also you can elevate the head of the bed with wooden blocks, okay? So that's just making sure you stay in a proper position. The don'ts. The don'ts are avoiding Spicy foods. So that means you the things that you don't do. So you want to avoid spicy food. You don't want to eat spicy food. Uh, you don't want to eat citrus containing food. So oranges, lemons, grapefruit, also uh, tomatoes. Uh, that's a vegetable, but that's also a, a, a acidic food. Limit caffeine intake and avoid cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption. All right, now the symptoms, we talked about this again, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, and a cough can be noted and shortness of breath. Shortness of breath is another thing and a cough is another thing that you can be presented with, with next-gen NCLEX and you may think, well, if they have cough and a shortness of breath, it is a viral infection, but no, it could be GERD, it could be GERD. So I am, I'm really pumped up for you guys to take this test and see the clinical presentations that you have in front of you. Cause you guys are ready. This is what we do every week. We do this every week. So I know you guys are ready for this. Okay, so diagnostics, how do we, how do we determine GERD? And this is very important because when you're studying content, you should study how something is diagnosed. So a pH monitoring probe, a small probe is inserted into the nostril and connected to a device that will record the number of times symptoms present and when acid level um, increase when the client lays down. So of course, we know the gastric contents. We talked about this last week for the uh, nasal gastric tube insertions that your pH and your, your uh, gastric acid is low. We're expecting it to be less than four. All right. Our nursing responsibilities. So stop the medications that may affect results at least 24 hours prior to this procedure, any procedure. That means if we are testing the gastric acid in our patient, or we're testing the levels of gastric acid, we don't want to give, um, uh, we don't want to give an H2 blocker. We don't want to give an antacid. We want to make sure that our patient's uh, daily experience is tracked and not something that has an intervention in front of it. And, and I think that makes sense with all procedures that we are sending our patients to we are not wanting to get false results. We want to get true results. So the doctor will tell us, the doctor will tell us which medicines he wants us to continue. But other than that, assume that most treatments are going to be taken away so that we can see actually how the patient is doing. Okay, ensuring client understands how to use the monitoring device. So that's teaching 
Teach client to avoid situations that decrease lower esophageal sphincter pressure or cause esophageal irritation. Instruct the client to a low-fat diet. These are the things that we are telling our client to avoid. Caffeine, tobacco, beer, milk, foods containing peppermint or spearmint, and carbonated beverages. Avoid eating two hours before bedtime. Maintaining a normal body weight and avoid tight fitting, tight fitting clothes, elevating the head of the bed six to eight inches and elevating the upper body on pillows. Okay. Medical management. Our goal is to decrease the reflux of gastric secretions. And so the diet, low fat, high protein, high fiber, that makes sense for what we're trying to achieve. And then we also have small frequent meals. Okay, no meals two to three hours before bedtime. The avoidance of reflux promoting food, lifestyle modification. All right, sleep on an MHBR. Does anybody know what MHBR is? If you know, go ahead. All right, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments. I might have to give a prize for the first person that puts that on there. <laughs> All right. Also, weight loss, weight loss and smoking cessation, smoking cessation. And so it's very, it is very important for us to understand what we are going to, what we are going to be teaching our patients. Okay. Because I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you how much of next gen NCLEX will be, how much of next gen NCLEX will definitely be, all right, will definitely be teaching and education. So whether you're a PN or an RN, you, you have to, you have to understand that education doesn't escape you, okay? Modified high backrest, modified high backrest. Okay. All right. Good job. Good job. And I, I am loving that I see so many people um, show up consistently, show up consistently. I'm going to answer your uh, questions at the end. Okay. Questions about failing NCLEX, questions about how, how much content, all those things. So just give me a minute. All right. Now let's go to the management. All right, the management. And let me just say here, there is a great rule that when you understand pharmacology, I want you guys to understand the class of medications when it comes to GERD, the class of medications, because your teaching is going to be focused a lot on how certain classes work. So if you have the Quick Facts book, if you have the Quick Facts book and you go to the, I was just reading this, the GI medication, okay? I'm focusing a lot on the teaching here and the teaching will be by class or their action. So make sure that you are you are focusing on there, okay? And then if you wanna study the actual topic of acid reflux or GERD, it's gonna be on page two, okay? It's gonna be on page two, all right. So for mild symptoms, you can do your calcium, um, your semethicon, right? Uh, moderate symptoms, H2 blockers, rantidine, famotidine, nizatidine, and then severe symptoms, you're going to do your omniprazole, your prokinetic agents, metoclopramide, bethenicol, domerperodone. Uh, All right. Those are the ones for the pharmacological management. Okay, so that's page two. If, if you have page two, if you have the next gen, and then page 106 and 107. Okay, page two and 106 and 107. All right, let's get into our questions. Questions today are relatively straightforward. I want you to try to get a four out of five. Here is our first question. Question number one, let's do this. All right. After dinner, during hourly rounding, a client awakes to report they feel like food is coming up in the back of their throat and there is a bitter taste in their mouth. 
what nursing intervention will the nurse perform next? Is it number one, perform deep suctioning? Two, semi Fowler's position. Three, keep the client in PO. Four, teach to avoid milk products. What are we going to say here for this patient? Remar nurses tap in. This is part of our study session for today. So we do content and then we go over and we do questions after it. This is what we're looking for. Good job. I see the answers on the screen. I see the answers on the screen. We have over 500 nurses watching. We have 103 likes. So we need to get to 210 likes. So I need 100 people to smash that like button on YouTube and we'll unlock the final question. All right. Now, correct answer. I see a lot of twos on the screen and the correct answer is two. We want to put the patient, reposition the patient. There's something that you can do. You can do it very quickly. You don't have to call the doctor. You don't need to order for it. Reposition the patient because it's going to reduce the contact of the lining of the food tube with acidic contents. And so it also reduces sleep disturbances in the patient. Yep. Question number two, here we go. The nurse is planning to teach the client with gastroesophageal reflux disease about substances that will increase the lower esophageal sphincter, okay? Which item should the nurse include on this list? Let me read this again. The nurse is planning to teach the client with gastroesophageal reflux disease about substances that will increase the lower esophageal sphincter pressure. Which item should the nurse include on this list? Okay. Number one, coffee. Two, chocolate. Three, fatty foods. Four, non-fat milk. Mm. And so, and so here... This is not a select all that apply. It's one single choice question. But this right here is more of a reading comprehension question than anything. Okay. And so we have to be able to read more. We have to have a greater capacity of understanding here. The correct answer is number four. All right. So we're looking here, the foods that will increase lower esophageal sphincter pressure will decrease reflux and lessen the symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. The food that will increase LES pressure is non-fat milk. Okay, now let's just, I just want to go back to our, I just want to go back to our picture here because when we're looking to increase this pressure here, we want to increase this pressure because that's going to close it up, right? And so you're going to have less acid being able to go up if this pressure is increased. This is a good thing. This is a good thing here. So if we go back to looking at all of our options, the food options, if you just look at it, um, coffee, we don't want that, and chocolate and fatty foods. So you have actually three, three food substances that we don't, okay, that we don't promote patients to have. We don't promote patients to have. And so then you have the one that is a good product, okay? This is why I say too, guys, the content is where it's at. You have to understand, you have to understand the intentions of the disease. You have to understand the, the way that anatomy is changing when a person has a certain condition. And you can't do that by just answering questions. So yes, the question may seem confusing if you don't understand this, okay? If you don't understand this. All right, let's get back into it. Question number three, a client reports frequent heartburn twice a week for the past four months. What other symptoms reported by the client may indicate the client has GERD? Select three that 
apply. Okay. Number one, bitter taste in mouth. Two, irritable. Three, red tongue. Four, black stools. Five, smooth red tongue. Six, Murphy sign. Ooh, that was good. Okay, go ahead and put your answers on the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see a lot of two, fours, and six. I see some ones. I see some people just like, I don't really know. I don't really know. And that's okay, too, because you are here to learn. You're here to learn. I need 30 more people to hit the like button so we can move on to the unlocking the question. Okay, correct answer is, ooh, one, two, and four. One, two, and four. Many people got that one right. Number one, a bitter taste in the mouth. Two, irritable. Four, black stools. Good job. The common symptoms of GERD are passive regurgitation or emesis. Okay, that's gonna give you the bitter taste in the mouth. Poor weight gain, irritability, um, hema to emesis, melena, heartburn, and anemia from blood loss. Great job, everybody. Question number four, I'm moving on. 39-year-old male client is taking Omniprazole for treatment of GERD. This is known as what type of drug? Number one, simethicone. Two, histamine receptor blocker. Three, proton pump inhibitor. Four, mucosal healing age. I'm looking for two people to put the right answer down as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. We need five more likes on YouTube to unlock this last question. You're almost there. If you're on Facebook, jump over to YouTube, smash the like button so we can move on. We just need five more. All right. Correct answer. I see you, Eva, Julia. You got it. Yvette. Great job, guys. Correct answer is number three. Omniprazole is a proton pump inhibitor. PPI. Yay. It works by decreasing the amount of acid produced in the stomach. Great job. Shout out to this Remar nurse. Normie says, hi, Regina. Thanks so much. Your lessons have helped me tremendously. I passed the NCLEX the first time I took it. That's the goal. I don't care how many times you failed before, even if you didn't. Um, the first time with Remar, I want you to pass it, okay? Good job, everybody. That was a proton pump inhibitor. Give it up for yourselves on today. Let me see. Did we unlock the question? Yes, we did. Amazing job. And I just want to say something. The partial credit is helpful. Everybody that's taking next gen NCLEX for the select three that apply, select all that apply. I believe that the partial credit on this new iteration of NCLEX is helping so much. And so that's one of the reasons why the passing rate has increased for next gen NCLEX. Keep continuing to do this hard work of showing up because the nurses that attend the study session that are committed to studying the content, they do so well. Even if they failed in the past, even if they failed in the past, they're able to do so well. So let's take the opportunity, do everything you need to do, get in the V2, get your content, let's go. You unlock the bonus question. Give it up for yourselves on today. You unlock the bonus question. Here it is. A nurse in the general ward educates the mother about feeding an infant diagnosed with gastroesophageal reflux disease. Woof. Okay. The nurse advises the mother to do the following to help lessen the emesis attacks. So now we have GERD and a baby. All right. Here we go. Number one, provide larger feedings. Two, Burp the infant less frequently. Three, adding water to the formula. Yeah. Four, thickening the feedings. What should, what should that nurse tell the mother? And this is a baby with GERD, guys. This is a baby with GERD. So what are we telling the mother? Yeah, tell her. 
again, education, education is a big part of next gen NCLEX. So what we want to tell the mother is I see a lot of twos. I see some fours. I see a couple threes. The correct answer, we're going to go with four, thicken the feeding. Did you get this one right? So what we have here, okay, what we have here is thickening the feeding because the gastroesophageal reflux is backflow of gastric contents into the esophagus. And you guys already know it's the incompetence of the lower esophageal sphincter. So small or more frequent feedings with frequent burps are often prescribed as the treatment, okay? Feedings thickened with rice cereal may reduce episodes of em emesis. And there's also a, a thickened formula that can be used as well. But you do need to definitely cross cut the nipple if you're feeding from a bottle. So education, education, education. You have to study. When I say content, people ask me all the time, what does content mean? That means studying the, the name of the condition, the clinical presentation of it, the uh, expected side, of, uh, side effects, right, of the thing that's happening to your patient. You also understand treatment. You also need to understand your nursing responsibilities and your patient education, okay? And treatment, going back to that, that includes medical and or surgical interventions. So content is so much more than just being able to answer a few simple questions. It's really having an understanding of the subject, okay? And that's what I want you guys to do because at the end of the day, it's gonna make you a better nurse. It's gonna make you a better nurse in the end. Good job, Remar nurses. Let's transition to the next part of our study session, which is Monday motivation, painful, painful, sharpenings, painful, painful sharpenings. And so this is for somebody out there, three out of five, not bad, okay? Three out of five, not bad at all. Four out of five, 4.4, how? Partial credit. Okay, in our lives, we should be like a pencil. You think about a pencil, you know, we don't find pencils too much. We don't really find pencils all that much anymore. When we are in our primary and elementary school, we have a pencil on us constantly. You don't show up to class without a pencil. What kind of student are you if you don't have a pencil and you're going to first grade or you're going to second grade? Um, but as we get older, we start to use less pencils and more what? We don't, it's not like a pencil. What? I'm a grown up. I, I use a pen now, right? But the pencil is foundational to us in the beginning stages of our education. And I think it is so interesting that we have this mentality when it comes to prepping for NCLEX. Because when you think about a pencil, okay, come on, come on, Nurse Cynthia, with the eraser on it, because you know you're gonna make some mistakes. <laughs> but with the pencil, what what like what did we do with that pencil? The pencil was daily. We used it every single day when we we're learning a subject. It was part of the process. It, it left a mark, our papers, we were taking notes, we were erasing the mistakes, we were preparing for the upcoming test. This is how we should be right now. You should be very similar to a pencil, not a pen, but a pencil. And so what happens is as we are on this very hard journey, because it is hard to pass NCLEX, it's not an easy task, but what happens is we begin to look up from our tasks, right? Because we're supposed to be head down grinding. But when we look up, we begin to look at other people. We begin to look at other pencils. And then what do we see? This is one of my favorite, favorite images. We see other people looking sharp. But in general, it's easy to look sharp when you haven't done any of the work, okay? And so what we see is a lot of what the young people call capping on social media, where people are just living these amazing lives. They, uh, you know, they seem to have everything. They seem to not really have to do the work, but it's a lot of fantasy on Instagram. It's a lot of fantasy on Instagram. And so some of y'all are looking at the sharpness of other people's pencils and in not really understanding that they're not in the working phase. Now, 
I don't know about y'all, but my life right now is looking like pencil number three. Like it is, it is kind of, it is kind of working hard right now. Okay. I'm looking a little rough around the edges. And that is because I am in a working mode. I need somebody here to be looking like pencil. Nobody should be looking like pencil too. Nobody is pencil two right now, okay? I need y'all to be looking like one, three, four. I, I need y'all to be looking like the work is being done daily, that you are being used up, okay, by this process because you have to be. You have to be. I need you guys to understand that now is not the time for the outward appearances. OK, now is the time for character develop because you're going to a next level, a next level financially, a next level um, responsibility, a next level of access. And so you cannot be just a shell of a person. You have to be fortified on the inside. You have to have a character that is not afraid of hard work that won't compromise or fold when you have an easy way out of something. All right. When you are sitting in front of that test and it's a five hour test, you can't be pencil number two. You can't be coming in there looking all cute and not have the endurance for this fight. OK, I need you to come in there something like today, like the hair needs to be in a ponytail. You need to have some layers on in case you get hot, in case you get cold. You need to have a good breakfast under your belt. You need to have good sleep. Uh, in your system. You need to have abstained from any drugs or alcohol. You need to have not been out at the club the night before. You need to come in there, pencil number one, okay? You need to be A1 ready for this battle, okay? And so in order for you to do that, you cannot be comfortable. You cannot be in a comfort zone during this process because when you're in a comfort zone, you're not going to grow. Work mode, first shift, second shift, third shift. You need to be in mandatory overtime mode. And when you are when you are, you know, in a comfortable place, most people they don't get to the next level if everywhere is comfortable for them. People ask me when they're in V2, why on the progress exams are you asking me questions about things you didn't go over in the lectures? Do y'all ever think about that? Do y'all ever want to send me those emails? Because some of y'all do. Y'all say, why you didn't, why are you asking me this question and you didn't go over it on the lecture? Why are you doing that? Why? I can't pass the test because you didn't tell me what this was, but you asked me about it, right? And so I need you to understand that the reason why I asked you guys questions that I haven't told you the answers to is because during this process, you have to be challenged. You have to be challenged. So if I tell you the sky is blue and then on the exam, I asked you what color is the sky and you were able to say the sky is blue, that doesn't prove that you understand. That just proves that you memorized, okay? You can't get through this test by memorization. And so as we're studying for NCLEX, I need you to come across some stuff that I didn't tell you so you can critically think so that you can say, hey, I didn't know that. That makes me uncomfortable. Don't get mad at me. Don't send me the angry emails, all right, or the angry comments like why you didn't tell me. I need you to get uncomfortable and decide that's something I need to look up. That's something I need to grow. I need to grow in that area. This whole, this whole experience is about you growing. If you start it the same way and you end it the same person, you haven't had any growth, okay? You haven't had any growth. So you have to start it one way and at the end of it, come out a different version of yourself in order to take this test. So how are we gonna do that, okay? Get out of your comfort zone so you can be able to do many great things. OK, you can do great things if you grow. Second thing, like the pencil, you're going to experience a lot of painful struggles in life, but you need it to become a wiser and stronger person. 
I don't know about you, but like how many people you are looking forward to growing older? And 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 you know nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows how long their life is going to be. But when you see an older woman or an older gentleman, you can appreciate them. You can uh, ignore. I remember being a little girl and I would go over to my grandparents' house and my grandpa would be sitting in a chair. My grandpa was one of those guys that liked to sit in a chair. He had this big like recliner chair. He would sit in and watch TV. And I would just sit at my grandfather's feet. And I would not even, we didn't even have to be talking, but I just love to be in a position to receive whatever he was about to say. Because I knew that it was something I had never experienced before and I could possibly use it to help me. When you see older people, you should definitely be able to appreciate their wisdom, their experiences. Like to grow old is a precious gift. And, and it's not... And it's not, it's not on that. You talk about sharp pencil. Our culture today, we don't value the elderly. Like we don't value them. We don't see them as models. We don't see them as heroes in movies or television. They are, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know about this world we live in, but the elderly are, are typically to the side. They're displaced, whatever have you. But they have something that all of us need, which is wisdom. They have it. All right. And so we have to learn to appreciate it. We have to learn to appreciate it because one day that will be us. That will be us. Right. We're going to be nurses have been in the game for 40 years. And all the, the younger nurses may be, I don't know, they may be totally in technology, AI, whatever, being nurses to aliens, who knows, but we will have an experience that we will still be able to add value to the profession. I say all that to say, I say all that to say is you're going to become wiser and stronger as you grow in this profession. Okay. As you grow in this profession, but you're not going to do it in your comfort zone. Okay. Um, this is this is also something that is very true, okay? Whatever mistakes you will ever make, you will always have a chance to correct them and move forward. And the thing about it that we have to understand is that whew, it's not an issue to make a mistake. It is an issue not to recover from that mistake. It, it is a bigger problem when you're not able to move forward past your mistake. The mistake is usually not the problem. It is our inability to pick ourselves up and try it again. And so what happens is we make a mistake and then we stay with that mistake for two, three years. And that's precious time that we never get back. So when we're younger, what do we tell young people, 19 year old? Oh, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do in my life. We say, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Try, try whatever. You want to, you want to go join the circus, go join the circus. You want to, you know, be a doctor, go try to be a doctor. And then if they fail, it's like, okay, come on, let's do it. What's the next thing you want to do? All right. And we have to have that with ourselves. We can't be afraid to try new things, but knowing if we fail, guess what? We got to get back up and try again because in success in life, one of the ways that you can succeed in life is understanding that you fail fast. If you fail fast, that's a great thing. I love when I love when uh, when nursing students message me and they say, "Hey, I took my NCLEX yesterday. I failed it. I'm going to try it again." I love that. That's like the best thing. Like, hey, I failed my NCLEX last week, but I'm going to test again in 45 days. Come on. That's the goal. Now, you know, so you failed. All right. You had an experience on this test. You didn't pass it. You didn't do how well you thought you was going to do, but you don't stay in that place. You don't stay there for years. Some of you guys today, today need to make the decision that I'm going to give myself the opportunity to fail fast. I'm going to fail fast. 
My goodness. Success is. I like that, Angela. Oh, I like this so much. Success is getting up and trying again. That's success. Success is not, oh, I did it perfectly. And I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the top of everything. That's not success. My goodness. One of the best, one of the best advice that I ever got was I was, I was trying to learn Spanish. Right. And I had a Spanish um, teacher and she was like, you can't be afraid to speak the language. Like you're not going to learn unless you make mistakes. You need to make 10,000 mistakes. And then I look at my little daughter. She's two Shiloh. She's learning how to talk and she will say, you know, um, mommy, me want, you know, me want TV or something like that. You know what I mean? She's trying to communicate with me and she has to make the mistakes in order for me to tell her, Shiloh, say, I want juice or I want juice, right? Instead of me want juice. And so it's the same with us. You have to make the mistakes so that you can learn. Uh, I probably shouldn't have did it that way. Next time I'm going to do it this way. OK, but you can't allow yourself to be paralyzed by your mistakes. And that doesn't matter if it's in school, you in the wrong school, get out, go to a different one. You get a nursing job. You realize I'm crying every day before I go to work. I don't like it. The people are not nice to me. Are you just going to stay there? Are you going to stay in that job for the next 40 years? Probably not. You'll probably be turning in your two weeks notice. Some of y'all might not even give two weeks. Some of y'all might give a day and say, you know, I can't do this no more. All right. So we have to fail fast. And that's OK, because at the end of the day, when we grow old, we want to be able to say, I did it my way. OK, learn from your mistakes. OK, next thing is. All right. This is it. People don't have to understand your journey. They don't have to understand your ministry. Okay. People may never see you from the inside. They may never understand it. They may never believe in it, but you have to. Okay. You got to do this. You have to, you just have to be okay with it. Okay. This is not, have y'all heard of the show American Idol? Have y'all heard or have y'all ever watched American Idol? We have another one. The Voice, um, America's Got Talent. What was it back in the day? What was it called? Star Search. I don't know. I might be dating myself, but I remember Star Search. And all of these shows, crazy, crazy, crazy. All these shows were crazy. People would go on there and they would say, this is what I'm about to do, right? This is my passion. I love this. This is what I do most of the time. And they would get up there and they would sing or they would juggle or they would dance or whatever. And then three people would look at them and say, no, nah, that's not good. I didn't like it. Like, nah, that didn't hit off for me. That's not talent. You are not going to make it. Do y'all understand how crazy that is? And how I never want you to do that. I never want you to put what you love in front of people and then say, do y'all think this is good enough for me? Is this good enough for you? Do you know how crazy that is? Don't, you don't have, to, nobody has to approve your life or your dreams. And some of us, we do it all the time. We look for people to approve. Okay, should I do this? Should I work here? Should I be a nurse? No, what God has given you, he has given you. Nobody else has to understand it. Nobody else has to approve it. Nobody else has to give you the green light to move forward in it. And I'm telling y'all that because I made that mistake. when I And I say this, when I started Remar, I went to... I went to this business incubator and I said, this is what I want to do. I have this, I have this vision. I have this goal of doing this program called Remar. I'm a help nursing students all over. And the man told me, no, that's never going to work. No, that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's not going to work. You need to do something else. You need to go teach at a college. Right. And so the man told me that my dream was not going to work. Look at the devil. Right. 
And so what I'm wanting you to do as I stand here and I've taught literally, literally hundreds of thousands of students, my quick facts book is literally all over this planet. V2 literally has thousands of students in it today. And a person told me that my dream would never work. So I want us to understand that you have to trust your dream, okay? Because nobody else can verify it for you. Nobody else can tell you how it's going to happen for you. And so you have to believe it, okay? You have to believe it. Uh, and so I'm motivated and encouraged to tell you guys, whoo, people might not get it. But that pencil on the inside has work to do. And that's you guys. All right. And so no matter what circumstances you have going on right now to this day, all right, you have to continue to live your life. You have to continue to live your life, guys. Oh, man. Thank you so much for watching. I love Mondays. I love our study sessions on Mondays when people are dreading Mondays. I love it because we get to come together. And I know you guys won't be here forever. I know that you will come and go. Many of you will come and go, but I am so grateful for the time that we have. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take like five minutes to do NCLEX questions. So those of you who are not, um, who don't have specific questions, class is over. For those of you who do want to ask me specific questions, I got like five minutes before I have an appointment. And so I need to spend some time with you guys. So what is it going to be? Questions, comments, concerns. Um, let me see here. I failed my NCLEX. I failed my first attempt on July 25th, trying to be motivated for the second chance. Okay. You want to talk about it? Um, we could talk about what, uh, we could talk about where do you think you went wrong? Where do you think you went wrong? How did you prepare? Uh, because those are questions you have to ask yourself anyways. When somebody fails the NCLEX, I'm always going to ask, how many questions did you have? How did you prepare? Because I think that it is very important. Um, thank you, Regina. Yes. Yes, that's the antidote. Um, what is the antidote for opioid overdose? The answer is naloxone. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, yes, tomorrow. You will see me tomorrow for class Tuesday. Okay. Um, Bailey, um, you can email me support at remarreview.com, please. I fell on July 26th. I got all 150. So I feel like I was so close. You were, you were. And, um, I would, I would definitely encourage you Bailey to take it as soon as possible because when you get a lot of questions on, uh, on your actual NCLEX exam, it does actually mean that you were close to the passing standard. And so, they allowed you opportunities to get over that passing standard. So please retake the test again. It could be an issue of uh, second guessing yourself. That's, I mean, that's what I, second guessing yourself or mm, maybe test anxiety, but you were really close. You were really close. Thank you, Professor Regina and Re Martin. This was one of the most best Monday motivations for me. For me too. For me too. That's for me. Thank you so much. Um, Failed with 150. Yeah. Any advice for me to think critically? Well, without studying with you, Bailey, I general advice would be to slow down and make sure that you understand what you're being asked. I think that's the best advice for all nursing students, really, because we can think that we have an understanding of what's being asked. But NCLEX is very tricky. It's very tricky. OK, and the people who write the exams, they go to these workshops and on the workshops, they are given tips on how to include distractors, but not make them apparent. And so you have to, I think you have to be very careful and make sure that you actually understand what you're being asked. 
okay? But Bailey, you're going to get a new test, okay? You're going to get a new test. So you have to start all over again with your studying. You have to start all over again. So make sure you do a content review because during that content review, it's going to help you to erase you know, the things that you were focused on the last exam and it's going to give you a fresh start. So you don't have my V2, try my V2, okay? You can get in the free trial. Everybody should at least be in the free trial of the V2. And you can do that. Go to my website, remarnurse.com. And the first section is just a pregnancy overview. So you're able to do that. Class tomorrow is 9 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. It's 9 p.m. Eastern time. Hello, I start my V2 today, but I cannot access my calendar. Make sure when you're in your file vault, you're clicking on the blue download link, okay? Click on the blue download link. Uh, you might have a pop-up blocker on as well, so check that. And then if not, just email me, support at Remar Review, and I will, um, I will definitely make sure that you get that calendar, okay? Okay. Um, I kept having 75 in my first and second time. What should I do? Miracle. Uh, if you are failing with the minimum, I think you should do a content review. Let me know how you have been preparing because typically if you fail NCLEX at the lowest amount of questions, then that means that there were just... Um, you know, big concepts that you didn't have mastered just as of yet. Not that you can't learn them. You absolutely can. But you just at the time didn't understand the probably the safety points of what you were being asked. Okay, nurse Amelda. Thank you, Regina. You are the motivation that I needed to pass. I passed last Friday. I'm officially a Remar nurse. Thank you for all you do. I use QuickFacts V2 in the workbook. Absolutely. Yay. So you have the workbook. You have QuickFacts. Okay. These are my products. All right. And I mean, you get this. You definitely have the content. You definitely are going to have the content here. The passing standard, what is the passing standard for, for the NCLEX? It is the, um, it's the logits. It's the logits. And I can't actually, my, my mind is going blank for the logits for the PN. I think the PN logits, I have to look at it because I don't know. I know the RN used to be 0.000. .000. And the PN, oh, I can't think of the logits. So I, I will look at that again. I will look at that again. But remember, this is a statistical exam. It's not a like a percentage exam. Hmm. Okay. So Marie, this is interesting. I failed my NCLEX on August 2nd. I received my report and surprisingly, my report didn't have below standard. It's all above and nearly passing 85 questions. So this is interesting, but it's also, if you read that report, it will tell you that the report is not intended to give you the specifics of your results. So anything that is near passing, it says near passing can mean that you were above or below it. So what probably happened was you were below the passing standards for, well, you were below the passing standard overall, but in those specific categories where it said near passing, you were more than likely below the passing standard for those two. However, because you don't get an exact printout of where you were at the time, it says you were near passing, okay? Mm, Marie says, before I didn't follow the schedule, now I'm following the schedule. Yeah, yeah. So like little things, um, little things structure uh, can help you to slow down. I don't know how fast you did. If you're doing my program, I don't know how fast you went through it. I just don't know. Um, but 
everything in everything in its proper positioning makes it work. Okay. Where do I get my calendar from on V2? You can get it from the file vault in V2. So on the left-hand panel, right under question bank should be file vault. Christelle, this is my first time on your YouTube live. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm going live tomorrow at um, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to do Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a topic that comes from Quick Facts. So if you want to study it, you can find it on page. Um, who wrote this book? Where is the Huntington's disease? Okay, 41. Okay. Huntington's disease. Okay. All right. Okay. How many questions do you recommend doing per day or should I just follow the calendar? Follow the calendar. That's number one. Number one, I, you should just follow the calendar. So I think <clears throat> this is my daily study calendar for the program. Okay. And it will say like, do 35 to 45 minutes in the question bank. That's what I want you to be aiming for more so than doing a certain amount of questions. Because honestly, if you're studying the content and you're studying the quick facts book, then you're, you're watching the lectures, you're getting a great foundation. You're getting a great foundation in my lectures. And so the questions that you do are going to be less important to me. You can do some questions, but don't feel like you have to do 100 or 60 or 50 a day. All right, Lydia. This, this is also my first time. I'm glad to have you here. Class tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. All right, guys. So, um, okay. Blessing. Hi, Regina. I'm yet to start using my V2, but I'm currently going through my quick facts. Please, where do I get the calendar? This calendar is in the file vault, okay? And I'm okay with you going through the quick facts because I do think that it will take you a couple times to go through quick facts in order for you to have it memorized. But when you start with the V2, follow this calendar, okay? All right. Okay, guys, so I'm going to get out of here. I will be traveling, like I said. I'm so excited. I'll be in, I'll be on the West Coast from Wednesday to Sunday, and then I'll come back to Ohio. So going there to just like do a couple, like a getaway for a couple of days, but I still want to make sure that I have my commitment to this class and all of you guys. Uh, Bailey says, thank you. I will be contacting you. <laughs> okay. I look forward to it. I'm here to help you guys. The whole goal is that you pass your NCLEX. Woo! That you pass your NCLEX and that you get your license. That is why we meet like this. And I'm, it's always a pleasure. So at the end of every class, we like to say our, our motto, what we believe, what we feel, what we write down, what we say to ourselves when we're in the NCLEX exam. And we just like, we say this to ourselves. It is, I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX. Okay. That's your thing. If you don't have a thing, that's your thing. It's, I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX. Because you really don't like have any other choice. Like people are waiting for you. They're like, what are you doing? What are you doing today? And you just tell them, I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. That's it. That's the goal right now. I'll see you guys later. With God, all things are possible. Bye-bye. <laughs>